pillar two, the stimulation and motivation. So this is about rewarding the players and giving compliments. This is a very important part because especially in esports, there's not much, let's say, knowledge about coaching or how to interact with humans. We do this a lot of from our own understanding, but sometimes we get a lot of, let's say, uh, focused on the game and the mistakes, etc., that we don't see the human part anymore. So that is also what Next Level Esports is focused on, the human part, to give those compliments, to g give them rewards in order to build their self-esteem so they see and feel their progress, not only from their inside, but also uh, be acknowledged from the outside. And that's a really, really important performance booster. So basically, if you have something to compliment and it's genuine, do it. So here is a little exercise to understand how our brain is wired. So look at these mathematics, all these rocket science numbers. So we have three plus three is six, two plus four is seven, one plus one is two, four plus one is five. So you see this and I don't know how you see it, but the first time I looked at such, uh, such a row of, let's say, uh, equations or I'm not sure even how you call it uh, sums uh, that's why I believe that's how I translated it from uh, Dutch but we often look at the second one the two, pl uh, two plus four is seven like oh that's a mistake and we instantly our brain focus on focuses on the mistake and not on the three things are going well so that is basically how our brain is wired also from the primary school and how things develop. So this is a really important piece that we should be aware of that how our, our brain works and it's more prone to protect ourselves or protect others uh, or to see mistakes in things in order to develop ourselves. But the way we work is we also want to be acknowledged, we, will, we want to be praised, we want to be inspired, etc. We're human beings of flesh and spiritual, energetic creatures and not only machines that can filter out and that you can change a piece of code and then it will always be fixed, the problem. So, yeah, it does indeed law. Yeah, it makes sense, perhaps, uh, reading from the chat. So five tips to stimulate and to motivate so if you have the chance uh, let's say at the end of a practice sometimes i understand sometimes the practice or the scrim is total garbage i understand and sometimes it's really hard to find the positives into a situation but i challenge you to look at the things that are there so after every scrim or practice or match there are always things that are positive maybe they put in effort or that they prepared well or that they executed uh, a, a small thing well, or the communication went well, or they showed uh, daring, or they were flexible, or they were, were very rigid uh, at a point that was very good. So you decide, you know better than me, uh, what type of context you can give positive compliments on, but it also be good that it has to be genuine, right? But there, I believe there's always something positive to say. So then number two is self-reflect on the positives. So just like uh, us coaches, or at least what I recognized for a couple of years ago is like when some, uh, someone did something right, we say, oh, that's so good because you did that and that, oh, that's so smart. But then we, let's say, take away a learning uh, moment of that person because it works way, way, way better if we... Uh, if we say or see a solution for ourselves, or that we reflect on something that we shouldn't do it anymore just within your home you bumped your uh let's say your body towards something and then you feel like oh that really hurts i shouldn't let's say bump i always move like this uh, around it or don't play with uh, I don't play with fire because you have to be burned but if your mom or dad say like, oh you need to watch out because of that then like who cares like nothing happened so I'm fine unless you experienced it and if you worked out the problem for yourself and you did good reflection on yourself what went bad or also what went good it 
is way more powerful so it gets remembered into the brain. So to do this in a practical way, you can do this at the end of every, let's say, scrim or practice, and you can do this of the whole team, but also what is a good way to let one player every scrim say or summarize what he think, what went well or what went good, to be self-reflective on himself or the team, so that becomes a part of the culture. Then we move on uh, to number three, that is don't reward winning, because what I said before is, winning or losing is always a consequence of the effort of the process or things that went wrong or good into the process it's just a result so don't reward winning so guys if we win uh, this cream i will let's say buy ice cream or i will send you a skin or whatever well it cannot hurt if you do it once because that is fun or you feel like okay now it's, it's a good time but generally speaking what i always say is if i would multiply my comments or my things that i'm doing by a thousand or a thousand days what would behavior of my surrounding will look like so if i would do that every day then they were only prone to win or on the reward or maybe individualized so that's not gonna work, that's not gonna happen. So you have to be careful by rewarding winning. It can be from time to time, but rather stay away from it. Then number four, reward the effort. So that's the opposite of what I've said. So reward the effort that players team put into scrim or practice. So no matter if you're individual coaching players or a team, then focus on the process. What are the pieces or milestones that they're doing correct and that they're doing wrong? So always be more wary and get be more aware of the positive ones because that is what will stick and that is what players want and need to hear as well to stay at the confidence level. Especially when things are not going well, uh, let's say in the season and you've lost a couple of games in a row, then the confidence drops and doubt is coming in, etc. So you have to still look for light points, let's say at the end of the tunnel, things that are going well, that they have a feeling that they can, that they are improving and that they can still improve a lot more if they do these steps good. Because oftentimes it's only overlooked as one singular process and the whole process is either good or bad. But you can chop it up in little steps and then you can define, okay, this was good, this was not so good, this was perfect and this was terrible, but this was good. So we're doing a lot, a lot of things right, but we have to do this. And then it's more, let's say, interactive and they are more eager to learn. And they feel more, let's say, valued as well. And the last part is don't work with individual rewards. So even though you might have a player or a star player and feel like, oh, if you make, a, a, let's say, a pentakill or like a full ace or whatever, uh, you, you kill the whole team or a hat-trick or whatever it may be in, in your game, is don't reward the individual because you don't want, let's say, a team of individuals. You want an in individuals that are working together as a team, right? So I think that uh, speaks for itself. So then a quick brief for tips for giving compliments is compliment regularly and sincere. Don't fake it only if you feel so, but sometimes you can be a very critical person and it's hard for you to find compliments. That is something that you perhaps want to develop for yourself, right? Just look at the ways and start small, something that you, uh, you it's, it's like a muscle you have to train, right? Just like in the gym, sometimes you have a preference for something, sometimes you don't. So if you find it hard to find compliments, then work on it. Then number two, give concrete descriptions of the compliment. So instead of, oh, that is really good of you, try to be precise and, and add on the right attribute. So for example, you communicated fast and confident. Now you took the lead, well done. Now that is a compliment that they can see like, oh, I did something right, I worked hard for it, and this is the result. That feels good, that is a real good compliment. Instead of only like, hey, good job. Like, it sounds nice, but if you're only shouting from the sidelines, hey, good job, yeah, nice, nice, nice. What does it actually do over time? It doesn't really do that much. Maybe for you it feels like, oh, I'm very productive, I'm super uh, positive towards the team, but the content is not there. 
So number three, compliment behavior, not the person. Instead of you are great, like then you're personal, but what is good is you practice really hard for this to work. Therefore you played great. So that's more the behavior side. Four, complement the effort for the process. So winning is a byproduct of effort and following a process. If you keep trying, you can eventually do it. It's going better rapidly. So that is also a way to more um, emphasize on a compliment to inspire them to not uh, demotivate them. Five, give tailor-made compliments. Every player has his own process. Be personal and adjust. So someone, just like the saying, like someone needs to kick in the ass. Someone uh, just needs to be cuddled or stroked uh, over the head. Uh, for example, everyone needs a different thing to get motivated. So number six, pray small steps. So don't only look at the big picture of like, oh, this is bad or that is good. Also acknowledge the small steps when someone is developing. Never demotivate someone that is trying to develop because you can really crush his uh, confidence and basically his soul in that way. So uh, um, praise every small step if you can, if it's sincere, of course, that players are making and you will see them play better, more confident and have better uh, performance in the end. And then number seven, never compare players with each other. So it's not like, oh, but that player, he can do it so you can do it as well. Believe me, players are always looking and they understand if they can do something, yes or no. So you have to understand that don't compare players with each other, but rather compare it towards their past self. Like, okay, we're two months now into the new season. Now, look back at two months ago. Do you remember that we were struggling? um with let's say did this particular skill or this map movement or this particular management then look where you are now you're doing this right you're doing that right you're growing tremendously the only last thing that we have to do are these little things we're still working on those but you make good progress so that's a really big different perspective on what to do and um uh, that's a, a different thing what to do. So I saw a message. Let me check. Yes, it's all recorded. So then we move on. So a last thing that I, it's not really about this, but I thought it, it, it fits, let's say this context is the 80, 20 rule. So we know a lot of 80, 20 rules. So put your effort on the 20% uh, and it will give you the 80%. Well, although that is true, I also want to introduce to you a um, different 80, 20% and that is work 80% of the time on things that go well already and expand it further towards excellence. Because within the school system, and we just like the with the sums and math equations, we get, let's say, distracted by the mistakes. And we forget that we are good at the older parts of the game. Let's say someone is not good at communicating, but he's a super good aimer, or he's a tremendous mechanical player, or he knows uh, outside of the game to motivate everyone and to crack jokes and to get everyone together to bond with each other. So be aware where a player has his strengths and where it hasn't. So expand the things that he does well and make it excellent and work on the 20% of the time on things that need improvement and at least make it acceptable. Don't expect a fish to climb a tree, for example, right? So be aware of differences, individuals, personality differences. And this is a, a very important thing to talk about. So this is the 80-20 rule that I would like to also give you. So then we came at the end of the second pillar. And the first two pillars are a bit more, let's say, extensive. But the last two pillars are a little bit more concrete and compact. So I believe there is uh, still uh, time for within the hour. So how do you rate yourself on stimulation and motivation? Are you at a one with a lot of potential or are you at a 10 being excellent or somewhere in between? So you write it down or put it in the lecture, hashtag lecture workshop text channel 
or just write it down or if you're good at remembering remember it that is also fine but I would like to write my stuff down in order to be engaged with it so this could help for you as well